Yep, go. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Thanks very much for tuning in. Mark here. I'll just let you watch these opening videos and I'll be back with you in a bit. Here we go then, the restoration is underway, taping up, and on to the first stage which is the dry sanding. But before I get stuck into talking about today's time lapse video and this lovely motor, I'd like to say a big thank you if you're a returning viewer and already subscribed to my channel. I really am grateful for your support and it's great to have you back for another one. If you enjoy the video, then please give it a thumbs up for me. That's always massively appreciated. And if this is the first time you've watched one of my time-lapse videos, or indeed any of my videos, then thank you very much for joining us. I'm so pleased you clicked on the thumbnail and hope you enjoyed the video as well. If you do, then please subscribe as I have lots more videos that I'm looking forward to sharing with you all very soon. And don't forget, if you have any feedback for me whatsoever, good or, I don't know, not so good, then please leave a comment below. Thanks. Now, I've been lucky enough to work on some great cars since starting my business in 2018, and I've actually worked on some lovely cars already this year, including a Chrysler Crossfire SRT6 and a supercharged Jaguar XKR. Both of these cars can also be found here on my channel, so if you're interested to see their time-lapse videos, then just head to my time-lapse playlist and you'll easily find them, and indeed all the other main time-lapse videos I've created so far this year. Why not check them out after you've watched this one? Well, talking about great cars then, this one, for me anyway, is very special indeed. The Maserati Gran Turismo is one of those cars I've admired since it was first released all those years ago, I think back in 2007. In fact, I remember standing in a Pizza Hut car park staring at one for far too long when I spotted one for the first time. They look great from so many angles, but that front end is just something else. What do you think? This particular example is owned by a friend of mine, Scott, who lives quite close to me here in Kent. Understandably, he wasn't happy with the fact that the offside headlight wasn't looking as good as it should be, in fact nowhere near as good, due to being scratched and slightly cloudy on the top edge. So he wondered if anything could be done about that other than replacing it for an expensive brand new headlight. Now, admittedly, in the opening videos, you probably thought it didn't look that bad, and that's fair comment. But in real life, it actually looks much worse. And when compared to the what we assume was much newer headlight on the other side, it really didn't help the front of the car at all. Maybe at some point during this car's life, that other headlight had been replaced, so it was a much newer unit. Whatever the case though, the two headlights were very mismatched and this one was really letting the front of this Maserati down. As is quite often the case, I went round to take a look at the headlight to assess it fully for Scott and also catch up. I'd not seen him for a while so that was great. Um, we weren't sure, to be honest, if I'd be able to eradicate all of the issues seen with this headlight, 
as there was half a chance some of the problems might have been a bit too deep into the plastic. But Scott was very gracious and happy for me to give it a go. He was, after all, seriously considering replacing the headlight for a brand new, very costly item, as he wanted the car, understandably, to look completely as it should. And like the vast majority of people, thought the only way to achieve that was to have replaced it for a brand new item. Well, spoiler alert, I'm really pleased to say I ended up giving Scott's car a lovely end result and we finished up with a great looking Gran Turismo front end once again. So thanks very much for your custom Scott and trusting in me. I'm glad we got an absolutely wicked result for you and your car. So just turning my attention to the actual time lapse video now then and I'm well into stage one which is as you know is the dry sanding stage. And by this time, I'll know just how good this headlight might end up because I'll be seeing defects disappear, hopefully. If they're not disappearing by now, the chances are they are possibly too deep in the plastic. And what I'm just about to say might sound a little bit sad, but uh, at this stage, if I'm seeing the defects disappearing, I'm actually getting quite excited because I know that as I continue to work through my processes, I'll end up with a super, super clear bit of plastic. A very happy customer and a great looking car once again. I was indeed seeing that here, so I knew all my efforts so far were worth it and I was really looking forward to the end result. And there you go, almost as if I'd timed it. Stage one, a dry hand sanding all complete and on to the first of the two wet hand sanding stages. More about that in a while. Now, if you're still here watching the video, I'm going to say another massive thank you very much. It's wicked to have your company. But I'm also going to take this opportunity to let you know if you're living in the UK, certainly in Kent, and you feel like you'd like me to come and take a look at your headlights, then you can do that as well. Maybe leave a comment below or get hold of me via one of the usual channels, and it'd be my pleasure to come and uh, meet you and take a look at your headlights. No problem. I'd just like to say as well that I do make a lot of short videos, the videos that are a minute or less, and I've now made I think five one minute time lapse videos. So why not, after this video, go and check those out, as I reckon you'll really enjoy those. Still working through the Second standing stage then, a little bit of retaping, keep things as clean and tidy as possible throughout the process, makes it much easier to work with the plastic. Not too long now and I'll be on to the final hand sanding stage. And this is where the clarity really starts to come back to the plastic. And if you're a bit sad like me, this is where you start to get excited because you know all the effort has been worthwhile, you've now got the polishing stages to go and you're going to end up with a great result. I do love my work, I think it shows, but yeah, I probably need to get out more. And here we go then, on to stage three. Not too long now and we'll be getting that super clear Gran Turismo headlight back. Now, I don't know what you think, but I don't think it would be right if I didn't share some facts with you about this amazing Italian thoroughbred. So here goes. Well, actually, before I do share these facts with you, if you know anything interesting about the Maserati Gran Turismos, or if I get any of my facts wrong, then be sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. What I'm going to start by saying is, throughout this video, I've been referring to this as a Maserati Gran Turismo which it is, but this one is a Gran Turismo S, and the S stands for Sport, so that sets it apart. That means that under that impressive bonnet, 
it's got the same motor that you'd find in a 1970s milk float. Amazing. Okay, I'm sorry, bad joke. No, of course, under that impressive bonnet is a Ferrari engine. And not just any Ferrari engine, it's a 4.7 V8. The standard Gran Turismo has a 4.2, but this one is knocking out 450 brake horsepower, which means this big old beast is able to get to 60 in a shade over 5 seconds. And if you ever find yourself on a racetrack, private road or an autobahn, it can pretty much get all the way to 190 miles an hour. I mean, even by super modern day hypercar standards, that's still really impressive. And arguably, well, for me at least, it isn't just about the power and the speed that this car is capable of because of that impressive motor. It's also the sounds it makes. Up front, it sounds great, but when you get round the back and you listen to those twin exhausts, well, it would be windows down, find a tunnel, who needs a stereo, that kind of thing. Amazing noises. Like many cars of this type, this beast has different settings for the exhausts. So I took the liberty of taking a few sound clips whilst I was there doing the job, and I've added them to the end of this video. Now, they're nowhere near enough, but I tried my best. So I really hope you enjoy those as well as all the after videos. Look forward to that. And I have to say thank you again to Scott, the owner, for being such a good sport and letting me try and take those videos as he was sat there revving the car up, undoubtedly spending a lot of money on petrol. Cheers, Scott. Well, like I said at the beginning of this video, I've admired the Maserati Gran Turismo for many years. And now, having worked on one and got as close to one as I've ever been, it's safe to say, I love them even more. I put a great deal of time and effort into everything that I do. The restoration work I carry out, and now these YouTube videos that I'm continuing to make. And this one is absolutely no different, and I hope you love the edits that I've put at the end of this video. Not too long now, and you'll get to see them, including a rear balance and spoiler that were fitted by Scott not too long before I carried out my work. I think they really add something to the back of the car. Why not let me know what you think in the comments? Final polishing then. Moving on to the sealant soon. Get ready to enjoy those after videos. Thanks very much for watching, have a great day, and I look forward to the next one.
And that is what I do. Please like and subscribe. Rest assured, there's plenty more to come.